This is Al Fritz at EarthHealing.info. Today we are interviewing Jeff Walburn, uh, who is a whistleblower. He's quite concerned about the Portsmouth gaseous diffusion plant uh, near Piketon, southern Ohio. And that plant had been used for years uh, since it was constructed in the 1950s for producing high-grade uh, uranium materials for weapons uh, for various government agencies and also for commercial use in low-grade uranium for nuclear power reactors. Jeff is quite concerned because the materials that are being decontaminated and decommissioned uh, have are coated with uh, heavy metals which are extremely toxic at times and these can be uh, exposed in water, air, land and uh, they have already caused problems which people say uh, are, do are affecting their health and Jeff is going to talk to us about this because uh, this is a major concern and it is one that is being uh, overlooked you might say by government agencies and the environmental movement and yet it might be one of the one of the most serious problems we have in the Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia area. My name is Jeff Walburn. Uh, I've worked at the Piketon Gases Diffusion Plant for 31 years. Uh, it's also known by the name Portsmouth or Ports officially in documentation. Uh, I've testified in behalf of the workers in the United States Congress. I've testified in uh, the Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C. I've uh, done 28, this year will be the 28th year of investigation on contamination and uh, exposure to the workforce at the Piketon plant. But now, as if you are aware of what's going on in the community, there is cause to believe that that, that uh, contamination has gotten out into the community. The uh, school at Zahn's Corner in Pike County, Ohio was shut down 2019. And we uh, have attended meetings since 2019. Uh, the Department of Energy fired their environmental manager. We've looked at uh, extensive documents and we've talked to the scientific community. So when you talk to me, everything that I say, I have checked with the scientific community. We talked to uh, Dr. David Menuda as a professor of uh, nuclear chemistry emeritus and uh, Dr. Michael Ketterer, uh, professor of uh, biochemistry at uh, Northern Arizona University, and uh, they're well-respected uh, fellows uh, within their scientific community. And so if you talk to me, everything that I say, I have checked with them to make sure that I'm in the right wheelhouse and that what I'm saying is trackable. Also, we know, Jeff, that uh... You are actually a native of, of Kentucky, too. Uh, right? Not native. Uh, I've been there 26 President. years. I actually was born uh, in Ohio, but I've been there 26 years now, live in Greenup County. Yeah. And uh, if people's familiar with that, it's right on the Ohio River. Uh, Boyd, it, it's between Boyd and Lewis, and it's, it sits right on the Ohio River. Actually, Daniel Boone's brother laid that town out. And it is across the river from areas of great concern in Ohio. Am I right about oh, that? Oh, yes. Especially uh, there's uh, what you would call Venturi or air current uh, groups there. And then, of course, the uh, Scioto River, which is a point of concern uh, with uh, influence coming from the uh, gaseous diffusion plant at Piketon, which they have acknowledged uh, on paper since 1976 that uh, they're putting U-234 and U-235 into Little Beaver Creek and Big Beaver Creek, which goes to the Scioto River, S-C-I-O-T-O, -O, and then goes into the Ohio. 
And of course, when they touch the Ohio, they're touching Kentucky. And uh, oh, everybody knows uh, that knows anything about the waterways that Kentucky actually owns the Ohio River and it touches uh, the, uh, excuse me, Greenup County. So you're afraid it is uh, heavy metals are coming into your Greenup County at this time. That is your concern too. That is my concern. Uh, they're doing a open air demolition on the piped and gaseous diffusion plant. We've asked them to do a tenting of the buildings and they're bypassing the tenting of the buildings or putting a sarcophagus over the material, marching it out piece by piece, cleaning it, not putting it airborne. And uh, if anyone is watching the news with the war now, you will see that airborne is an issue in Ukraine and the Russian tankers went through the Red Force, kicked up dust, ingested it, and they're all showing signs of uh, nuclear exposure. And they say that they'll die from that airborne exposure. It's also in the Navy nuclear manuals that airborne is a factor but all that DOE wants to talk about is external exposure. Uh, there's what they call health physics and industrial hygiene. One is external exposure like a health physics or dosimeter badge might pick up. And then the other one, and I worked at Piketon 20 or 31 years, not in one time with plutonium present and laying and, and to be kicked up airborne, was I ever given a nose swab or a fecal sample to see if I had been exposed sent, uh, to plutonium? And it is there. Uh, Lawrence Livermore uh, College in 1995 did uh, uh, characterizations of the uh, material that was there and they have characterized it that uh, there's transuranics there. And you're afraid that these are entering the air, not only of uh, the Piketon area in Ohio, but also it could be spreading into Kentucky possibly? Is that- uh, I believe this. We had 11 kids that uh, died of uh, leukemia hmm. at Pike County, Ohio. Hmm. DOE came. They they gave out information which was erroneous on the same ACER. It's the program that they, they uh, log their uh, airborne uh, filter uh, system that they uh, monitor with. On the same documents, it showed that uh, Otway, Ohio and the Northwest area had figures that were worse than Zahn's Corner School in 2018, but they hid those documents. They did not come forward with them. We have those documents. Uh, 2013 through 2015, when they were doing the uh, cut and cap, what they called inside the 326, we've had Dr. Michael Ketterer look at their ACER numbers. He's qualified to do that. And the, uh, Technesium 99, 14 miles from the plant south, were 100% equivalent to the figures for Technesium 99 at the plant. So you're traveling 14 miles, the levels are still the same. 14 miles, you're just a short distance from uh, the river and you've had illegal shipments being brought through Pike County, through uh, Greenup County. Uh, Charles Lawson and myself went to the governor of Ohio and the state police. We went to the previous administration governor in Kentucky and the state police. We went to uh, elected officials. We told Rand Paul, we told uh, Congressman Massey asked them to stop this, but Doe putting themselves up as the um, 
to monitor this and they're a regulator, they're not giving the true information. We're having people come to us, uh, Father Fritz, all we have to do is hold still and people tell us we're doing wrong things there. The way we're doing things is wrong. The shipments are illegal. We're moving stuff that shouldn't be done. And if a person wants to check that against the facts uh, nationally, Savannah River was sued by uh, the state of Nevada for illegally and clandestinely moving plutonium from South Carolina through several states into Nevada without their permission. Uh, it was also done uh, from Oak Ridge to Nevada, uh, nuclear waste. So when Doe suggests that they wouldn't do such a thing, we've already have, uh, we've caught them twice in other instances and we're going to elected officials. Uh, when you take this stuff out packaged wrongly and you're taking it and it might have transuranics and you're taking it through populated areas, uh, you're putting the population at risk and there's uh, no amount of paperwork or uh, amount of uh, necessity that would demand that you do things in such a fashion. Uh, is this a problem that involves not only Ohio, and also you were talking about Nevada, but uh, Kentucky's uh, own environmental people uh, are neglecting this also? Um, when we got the news, I got the news, of course, we had the 11 uh, in uh, Zon's Corner in Pike County, while well, I had my antenna up, you know, I was alert. Well, a well-respected attorney who's married to a uh, local judge come to me and said, Jeff, I know what you've been working on. We've got three kids now in Greenup County mm -hmm. that have uh, leukemia. I talked to a person by chance and I found out their husband had died of neuroblastoma, which is from exposure to nuclear material. Uh, they are having in the region, we're having brainstem births without, uh, kids are born with a brain stem, but no brain. And we've, we've had an occasion in the, the uh, it, and when I talk about past, when you talk about half-lives of this material, 50s is, is recent past, it, it, the 50s would be. People like to suggest this, this, you know, this stuff dissipates or it goes away. It, it's here for thousands of years. It does not go away. It goes into the flora, the fauna, into the uh, rivers and, and aquifers. And us being in an agrarian society, there's uptake. And not to mention, and I, I uh, challenge anyone from Doe to suggest that airborne uptake is not an issue. And when you've got technesium 99, 100% of the level, 14 miles south of uh, the uh, Piketon plant, it's, it's irrefutable evidence. It's their numbers. It's not our numbers. Well, uh, one number that bothers me very much are those three kids who have leukemia in uh, Greenville County. In a normal circumstance, there wouldn't even be one, would there? In a large uh, three out of thirty-six thousand, and and if you think uh, adults, you know, men, women, and adults, and you've got three children, and and in that proximity to uh, Pike County, and with them doing open-air demolition wouldn't you err on the side of responsibility and caution? But let me explain something to you, Father Fritz. The Department of Energy, when they started to demolish the plant, they came in and suggested, here are the uh, five counties that are affected by this. Here are the stakeholders. So they named five Ohio counties right around Pike County. And I said, don't forget Kentucky. 
do not forget Kentucky. And they laughed and I said, that's you're you're being ridiculous to suggest that there's a uh, some sort of boundary in the air that this stuff will not cross. It will cross boundaries. It will follow streams. Um, and I said, now you're bearing stuff underneath. You're on a top of an aquifer. Where is the science here? Where is the common sense to doing open air demolition or burying over? Uh, aquifers or putting material out in streams that you've done since 1976. And we went to the commissioners in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, I'm also a uh, fine gentleman, ran for governor, uh, did not make it, but he's a confidant to the uh, current governor, Governor Bashir, uh, Rocky Adkins. I've called and asked for epidemiology studies. Um, I've told them of this, and I have no doubt that Bobby Carpenter has talked up to the state uh, in Kentucky, and I'm not getting anything back. And what I've made them aware of is what I've just made you aware of, the proximity to what's going on. And we, they have a funny way of doing things. It's a federal facility, but then they want to break it down to states, and those boundaries are false because it is a federal facility. It's federal documentation. We've talked to the FBI about illegal shipments. We've talked to the federal DOT. They're sticking their heads in the sand on this. And the Department of Energy, uh, didn't they actually... Uh uh pan you people and say that you were a bunch of hillbillies or something and they uh, they did they they suggested that uh, we were hillbillies and i said you know i'm smart enough to read and i'm smart enough i'm i'm a nurse uh so i'm trainable to some effect i work swat and anti-terrorism so i'm i'm uh i would say that i'm trustworthy and uh I was in local politics and was vice mayor of a town and leader for about eight years. So I'm responsible in the effect that if someone comes to me with a problem, if I can't solve that problem, I go to the experts that can. And the Dr. David Minuta, Dr. Michael Ketterer, uh, Kate Brown at MIT, uh, they are beyond reproach. They're uh, scientific background is unquestionable. They are fellows in high esteem. So when I ask them a question, of course, uh, if you get into nuclear chemistry, they may have to break something down to layman's terms, but I had chemistry, so basically had understand it. But then they go one step further and tell how this stuff flows through the air. But when you've got Jennifer Granholm, as Secretary of Energy, and then you had uh, Governor Perry, they know nothing about science. And you've got people coming to them, telling them, oh no, it's this, it's this, but it's a, a regime accomplishment and it's across the aisle. It's in both Democrat and Republican. So I don't want anyone to think that it's one or the other, everybody's, sticking their head in the sand because they have no answer. And I think that's the biggest fault is that they're not bringing the scientific community together. They're not having charrettes, which I participated in many of those I've testified. Uh, and to look for answers here and not just, uh, they talk about work. If this was done by the numbers, it, there would be work for years. And it's quite odd to me that the very people that messed up the environment, that messed up the workers, are the ones tasked with cleaning it up. So they don't want to find any dirty laundry in their own closet, and they are the ones that wore it down and put it there. Do you think that the environmental issue may be the most serious one in the state of Kentucky that's being so neglected at this time? 
I, I think in the world, uh, Father, uh, my compatriots and, and people uh, that I counsel with, we think it's bigger than global warming. Global warming uh, is an issue, but this is a poison that it has no boundary. It has no uh, poli politic. It will kill. And you have to suggest, I mean, there's a lot of things I won't get into, but uh, science and biology is definite. And the results of exposure to these these uh, isotopes that are harmful to us are sure to kill. It's not questionable. It is sure to kill. We have we have documentation on it that goes back to the Manhattan Project, and we sure don't want that out in the air. And they, when you're taking half steps and half measures, that's what happens. Uh, could you imagine uh, putting your family in a car that a guy didn't put all the lug nuts on? You know, he said, ah, it'll be fine. I think it'll, I think it should hold. <clears throat> you know, it, I mean, it's that simple. These a lot people of environmentalists are taking are, liberty. Yeah. A lot of environmentalists are very concerned about right now uh, the wildflowers that are coming out or the planting of trees. They s seem to fail to do what was done in the very early days that we had back 30, 50 years ago. And that is to look at troubled environmental issues that are not, that are problems and are not being addressed. Am I right about this? Uh, you're exactly right. We had a gentleman from South Carolina that worked at the plant that obtained uh, wildflowers and flora and fauna from out around the, the gaseous diffusion plant. He, uh, laid them on x-ray plates and they developed their self. Uh, if people understand the process of x-ray, you put your hand up, you emit an x-ray and it goes through your hand and develops the film. And what we're seeing actually is a shadow. These plants laid on there, made their own uh, emission of uh, x-ray by uptake within the plant itself from the soil. Could you say a word about uh, the fact that uh, Russian material was used in processing at Piketon and we're in a conflict right now between uh, the Ukraine and Russia and uh, yet it's their material is involved in what some of the battles are that we're talking about here? Right, uh, during uh, the late 80s, uh, if you're uh, familiar, uh, before Yeltsin, but in 90s, uh, one of the things they had worked on was a program of swords to plowshares, and very noble. Uh, the Congress was all over it, and they passed the Energy Policy Act in 93, where we were supposed to bring uh, warheads here, but the Russians believed that anything over 20% assay is HEU, and they weren't letting us monitor. The uh, Russians, uh, we have it on authority that they were sending material that was not warhead material, that was not running uh, uh, cohesively and current with the Energy Policy Act of 1993. Um, President Clinton was making speeches about never again will not do human radiation experiments on people. And then they were bringing plutonium laced material through the back door to Piketon and weren't telling the workforce. Uh, they weren't telling the people uh, that were handling it. Uh, they weren't letting us monitor the breakdown of these warheads. And uh, there's a couple of... Uh, articles uh, both on transparency from uh, James Goodby at uh, Princeton University and then one at Harvard University uh, that was outside the government, but they, Goodby was a, um, a uh, ambassador to uh, the Ukraine at that period, and he knew a lot about, uh, he was a scientist besides being an ambassador, but we were bringing material that was not warhead material here and putting it into our system. And DOE and the, the Department of Energy and the Department of uh, Defense 
was participating in that. And they were actually, in our viewpoint, breaking the Energy Policy Act of 1992. And then the National Security Council and the State Department stepped in and completely bypassed it. Well, that is, uh, it means that uh, we are suffering from what we did wrong at that time uh, with uh, citizens, uh, including children, and, uh, and the lack of monitoring of our areas is very harmful to a lot of our populations. And uh, it's harmful to all our populations. Is this and, and this, uh, the Russians effectively are killing our people without firing a shot. Okay. And is this migration of the heavy metals, do you think it's going to be continuing? Is this what we're expecting? We were talking about 14 miles from the center at one point and talking about the river and uh, Greenup County now. Is it going to continue to spread, you think? And then yes. Uh, at the gases diffusion plant in Piketon, there's three buildings that were in the process. X333, which started the feed and then as it progressed, it was sort of like an upside down L. The 33 would have been the thumb and uh, then the, the 30 and then the 26 was the end of the process. So three buildings, almost, uh, it would have been a mile and a half in length, uh, many thousands of miles of, of uh, piping. And for anyone to suggest that you could get all those, uh, that high assay material out of there or the plutonium that had been put in there, that, I mean, that I'd like oh, to have them Monty say that in Pro. front of scientists. Okay, in the uh, more than one mile of process building and thousands of miles of piping, for someone to suggest, oh no, we cleaned that all out before we took it apart they'd be laughing stock in any uh, neutral meeting because we have the uh, chief scientist of the plant that says there's still high assay material there. So if it's there, they're doing open air demolition, it's going airborne. And we're, we're talking about demolition at this time. Am I right? Yes. Yes. And there's two other buildings. Uh, there's still they started on the 26 building, which would have been the worst. They, never, they didn't want to listen to anybody uh, about doing tenting. They, they talked about how much it would cost. I said, it's not what it would cost, it's what it will cost. And, and the human factor here uh, making, in our opinion, Pike County and parts of Greenup County a radioactive no-go area uh, if the truth is told about the amount of uh, radioisotopes that are being uh, deposited in the soil and in the water uh, and in and the, uh, we talked about, for example here, they talked about Nitro West Virginia and Teflon. I think there's a, a, a show called Dark Waters. Uh, this, uh, the deposits that go to it's heavy. It's like, it's heavier than lead. So it sinks and it travels. And so you get that in your, your waterways, it's there and it travels. Uh, we're, you know, you're going to the Mississippi river, you're going down to Paducah. They're putting material in the water, uh, putting material in the water here. It's, it's going in to the Mississippi river, to the Delta. Where does it end up? And the idea that we can't have meetings on this subject and be honest with ourselves without people from the local DOE, uh, to me, they're not a factor because one, they're trying to get it done, and two, Floor Corporation is trying to make a profit on it. And we sure don't want to talk to someone that's in the business of making profit to set the parameters of what safety is it uh now well right now uh we've went twice with documentation that would show that there's uh contamination in otway and at lucasville to brian davis who is the head of the commissioners in scioto county and one of the documents they actually stamped in 
but then threw us out of the meeting. They didn't want to see it. Well, there's uh, a program called the Site Specific Advisory Board, SSAB, that DOE has both at Paducah and they have at Portsmouth. Well, they put the head commissioner on this SSAB uh, board. We think that's a total conflict of interest. Um, just like them getting the $500,000 and not putting it towards the health and safety of the community, there's grants coming in uh, for water. Pike, Pike County got a $170,000 big check. You know, they hold it up in front of them. They're all behind it. I said, $170,000, but you're putting material and influence through uh, Big Beaver and Little Beaver Creek that's going to Kentucky and touching Kentucky, which is contiguous. And I said, what are you slapping yourself on the back for? Because you're contaminating waterways while you're giving them a $170,000 check. I mean, it's, it just defies logic and it defies science and it defies community when your people won't stand up for the health of their people. What is part of the problem? Is the problem that some of these officials uh, are afraid of other people, uh, such as uh, their superiors? Uh, or is it because they're afraid of being threatened? I think you yourself have been threatened. Am I right about that? Oh, yes, sir. Um, Charles Lawson and myself have been threatened. Our lives have been threatened. Our families have been threatened. Um, we, when I testified in front of the Senate, they put out a day before I testified exactly what I was going to say. I had my wife hidden, my son hidden. We were barricaded with weapons in our room the night before I spoke in front of the Congress or Senate. Um, yeah, we've been under threat, uh, but I look at our forefathers that stood up for us against threat uh, from Hitler and uh, different regimes. And, and they answered the call and I intend to answer the call. Uh, I'm not threatened by, by standing up for my, my beliefs, my, my country, my family, my community, my friends, and people I don't even know. When I hear these kids getting leukemia, I know what's going on in their house. I'm a nurse. I know what's going on there. They're beside herself. They think it's something. Could I have done something different? It's, it's a secret and silent killer. And it's time for the Department of Energy and the government to own up to what they are doing. Are these threats uh, due in part uh, to economics, to uh, money-making operations, and to yeah. billions yeah. of dollars that might be involved? Father Fritz, it's, it's this. If there's shortcuts and there's people that are contractors, if they can get you to shortcut something, it, they get their money and they go. Floor, for example, is in 30 countries. Well, we're not a third world country. That's not the way we do things. We, we defend our, we have checks and balances. Uh, we have government people. We go to the government people, but they've got a lot more money to hand out than we do for lobbying. We just go to Washington on our own money. Uh, we've went, we've testified putting ourselves and our family at risk and we tell the truth and we use their documents. But then when their documents hit the table, then they say the meeting's over. We don't want to look at anything else. So why are you afraid? It's your documents. What should you be afraid of here? And when they talk about economic recovery, you're putting a nuclear waste dump in Pike County, Ohio, over an aquifer that goes through Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia and Virginia. It is a mile wide, is an agrarian aquifer. Uh, Charles Lawson and I went to pipe stem and spoke to people and they don't even know it. So here you've got 
DOE doing things that uh, Ferguson Corporation came in that were geologists out of Washington and said, uh, Washington, D.C., said, you shouldn't be burying anything east of the Mississippi River. It should be in a high desert. And they're trying to glassify some of this material. But though is the Department of Energy is always so oh, cost too much. I said, the ultimate human cost and the fact that if you walk this safely down, if you could do it properly and safely, we'll still be alive. Our, we won't be having oddities in our births. We won't be having the death of our children. And we can say that the efforts that we did with nuclear material to protect our country, now we're doing away with some of that, but it was worthwhile. But if we keep doing wrong, it's not worthwhile. We are right now uh, demolishing those plants, the three that you were mentioning. Uh, where is that material going? Is that going west of the Mississippi or is it being buried here in Kentucky? Or being buried here, it's being buried here. And uh, we've had uh, the EPA, they averaged when they, they put a big liner in and they lay this liner in and uh, it's already known that those liners have split somewhere else and uh, uh, that groundhogs had eaten through them, but they were within 20 feet of the aquifer and then averaged it. The EPA gave them a pass but there was money that changed hands, $3.5 million. And I'm not suggesting there was bribes, but money exchanged hands. They gave them a pass. It was a bad idea. They had uh, uh, geologists that were brought in that know and says, bad idea. And they're still doing it. And uh, some of the stuff that I, we're getting word that they, they can't ship it. It's so hot, they can't ship it. So the question is, are they amending the record of decision? Like you'll hear that as rod. Are they going by that? But that subject's not coming up because people are working. And we've had no meeting on that, but we're getting word that some of the stuff is just so hot. And, and I mean, radioactively hot that they can't ship it. What are they going to do? Put it in the hole? And, and would you want to build your business on top of that or near that? These disposal places are in Ohio and you're within miles of the Piketon plant. Is that true? Uh, where uh, just outside the gate. Uh, some of it's still on. on uh, it's, it's in within the perimeter of the plant. But uh, you yourself uh, from Irvine, you know about the... Uh, fracking waste that was put there. And we had that put in uh, Sarda County too. Yeah. Uh, at some point or other, I, I was an elected official. At what point do you hold meetings where documents are put on the table? And, um, but then you have a meeting where your commissioners from Sarda County is, is on their site specific board the ones from Pike County are uh, taking $500,000 and not doing the right thing to find out if the kids are having uptakes of radionuclides. And if they're not, fine, that's great. But we've got 11 dead, so we have a starting point. And so now it's, and then they ace uh, Greenup County out of it, say, no, no, says, we'll tell you who are the stakeholders. I said, you're wrong. Greenup County, Kentucky is a stakeholder. And for that matter, uh, the state of Kentucky is and its environmental uh, group should be more concerned about this. Am I not? Yes, sir. I, like I said, I have put the calls out to the governor. I've asked for epidemiology studies. I've asked for them to address it directly. And uh, some of them, you know, these are fine men from across the spectrum of politics. It has nothing to do with politics. You cannot stick your head in the sand when it comes to your children. That's our future. 
You you cannot. You have to act in act in responsible ways. And uh, I have one son. He's worth the world to me. He's not for sale. Well, it's a very strong issue that we are talking about, and one that's being neglected in many ways because uh, uh, it involves so many people and threats are being placed upon those who do, like you yourself, uh, Jeff, and others um, who do speak out. But it still must be spoken about. Uh, and uh, you have given us a tremendous insight again into this. Is there any uh, final statements you would like to make on this issue uh, when we try to take it around uh, to different people uh, who are concerned citizens in these states of Ohio, in New, uh, West Virginia and Kentucky? I think that there needs to be specific charrettes or meetings with the idea that if, it's, if it is, let's say that it is and try to uh, mitigate it uh, best we can. If it is not, um, then great for us. But this, the question is coming up the proof is the children, and uh, God wants adults to stand for those children, not that can't speak for theirself. That's where I don't think I'm probably a worthy person to do that, but I'm not going to shirk my responsibility to do it. I, I just uh, everybody probably feels that way when you're called to to do things that are tough, but we're not backing up. We're not gonna be silent. Uh, the scientific community should be screaming their heads off. We got 700% uh, higher than anywhere else in, in Ohio our cancer levels are. Uh, if, I mean, it's just as simple as if you had a sewage plant next to your house and you're getting sewer effluent in your yard, where would be the first place you'd look? I mean, you don't have to be a uh, rocket scientist to figure that out. Well, you've been a great help to us all and uh, you deserve credit for it. And I hope that credit can come in the way of people will get attention, give us more attention on this and do some of the meetings and gatherings and uh, other, uh, types of work that needs to be done uh, to make this a issue that it really is one of the most important environmental problems facing us today in our area of the country. And Thank the you very much, uh, Jeff, for all of the information you've given us. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your efforts to get this message out, and we're prepared to speak at any time, anywhere, Okay. Bar bar the cost. We don't we don't look at that. We're taking it out of our own living to do this, and we think it's it's worth that much. 